excerpt was taken from the Full and Bloom interview with producer-engineer Tony Platt. You can listen to the entire interview at fullandbloom.com. Brian's voice, which I was, I guess, a little shocked just because of the power behind it and almost seems like you might have to go to a dynamic mic, but it looked like you used an 87 on his voice. Yep. Yeah, an 87 and an 1176, that was it. And you printed the 1176? Yes, just a, just a little bit. Uh, it, it made it easier for him to move in and out on the microphone and, and maintain dynamics. Anything else stand out about his vocals for that? Um, no, I mean, you know, we he worked extraordinarily hard with those vocals and um, it was a huge ask to to do that. And, you know, I mean, that was where the perfection came in from Mutt's point of view. He really wanted every single one of those lines to absolutely count. And the typical way that we would record would be to do three or four tracks of the lead vocal. And each one of those tracks, we'd probably drop in a few words uh, here and there. So what we ended up with was three or four tracks that in their own right would be pretty okay and then we would go through line by line uh listening comparing each one of those tracks and choosing which one we were going to use sometimes it would be just a word at a time on one track and sometimes it would just be even one syllable and then we would go through and compile that um onto one track um something more i mean you know something of a a, a labor of love that and it's so much easier to do with pro tools but if you're doing it on multi-track it's uh, uh, multi-track analog. It's uh, a long, drawn-out process. When you're recording vocalists, was it typically just you, Mutt, and the singer? Did everybody leave the room? Everybody's different. Brian, we didn't really have many people in the room, but that was because the band weren't interested in listening to Brian singing one line over and over again. So that was a bit of each, really. Um, but of course, Brian needed a lot of kind of support and help because it was massive task that he was being asked to undertake. Lou from Foreigner, uh, I mean, I'm still convinced there are at least 30% of the vocals on the album were the ones, the guide vocals that he did whilst we were recording the backing tracks. Um, and he's just the most amazing singer. So you, you've got a, you've got different things um, with Boomtown Rats, um, different yet again, because that sort of punky music really didn't lend itself to the incredibly polished vocals. Too 